it, isn't it? It should be, for this is the peaceful little village of Boggy Bog, Wisconsin, where the even tenor of life is uninterrupted by the noise and clamor of the workday world. Where calm and serenity reign unchallenged in this... In the cool vastness of the... Of the deep forest glades that... that... Oh, never mind. They're gaining Fillmore. Can't you go any faster? Yeah, I can, but this truck keeps holding me back. Then it's time to turn to subterfuge. Uh, subterfuge. Uh, it's not on the map, Professor. Now, of course not, my bird brain buddy. It's just a state of mind. Well, let's not cross any state lines, Professor. That's real trouble. That's a federal offense. Pull onto that side road, Fillmore. Left, right? Right, left. And the strange conveyance pulled to a stop before a neat little home by the side of the stream. Mm, I wonder who resides in this quaint concept. Yeah, it's his name on the box. What is it? Uh, it's mail. U.S. mail. Thank you, J. Robert <laughs> Knucklehead. Let me see that. Well, the name is Hooper. Hoppity Hooper. You're almost here, uh, Professor. I'll put the truck in back of the house, Somerset, and then join me on the front porch. Down the porch? Of course, Ulrich. We're going to pay a social call on this Hooper chap. In a twinkling, Fillmore had hidden the truck, and the two rascals stood at the front door. Who is it? It is I, the Hoppity, your long-lost uncle. My long-lost what? Hoppity! Hoppity, my little nephew! At last we meet again! Again? I never saw you before in my life! Tut, tut, laddie. Why, I've known you since you were this high. Uh -huh. That's all higher I am now. Oh, Fillmore, he doesn't remember me. I've been away too long. You've been in the sun too long. Well, come on in, whoever you are. Uh, still the same little gentleman, isn't he, Carlisle? Hey, who's he? Oh, I almost forgot. Hoppity, this is your cousin. A cousin at... Uh... Fillmore! Fillmore Bear! Oh, he always forgets. He's my cousin? Remember, you said it first. Oh, a picture of your dear, dear mother. That's Whistler's mother. Well, any friend of yours be boys. That's my mother. Of course it is. You sure don't look alike. Well, she took after father's side of the family. <laughs> Hey, Hoppity, you in there? Sure, Sheriff. What is it? We're chasing some phony snake oil peddler in a sidekick. Phony? I'll have his badge for that. You seen any strangers in these parts? Strangers? You know the resemblance now? No, nobody's here but some relatives of mine, Sheriff. Okay, see you later, Hoppity. Ooh. Thank God, that was close, Bentley. What? I said we were very close. Well, Uncle, uh... uh Waldo, Waldo Wigglesworth. How long you figure to be in town? Uh, matter of fact, dear boy, I'm already on my way. Business, you know, Judy Gold. What kind of business? Uh, we're peddlers. Ouch! Bump on, please. I prefer to think of us as roving retailers. Observe our portable emporium. Everything for everybody, from pots and pans to rubber bands, from needles and pins to mandolins, and featuring... <laughs> Indian guide elixir for young and old. Also middle age. They're good for chills, fevers, warts, and broken legs. Makes a brilliant hand cream, also waxes floors shiny bright. Gee, what's in it, Uncle Waldo? A bear living, me boy. Ha, I mean in the medicine. Oh, that. What is there? Precious herbs, me lad. Special compounds of roots, barks, and berries. That... Yeah, I filled the bottles with water like you told me, Waldo. Uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> where'd you get the water? Yeah, from that little bubbling spring out back. Oh, no, not that. So what's the matter? But that's water from ring a ding spring. Well, that's bad, lad. Bad? Just look what happens when I pour some over this rock. Hey, God, that's positively supernatural. It's uncanny. And spooky, too. Well, what in the world is the terrible secret of ring a ding spring? Be back next time to meet Hoppity Hooper starring in The Thing in the Spring. Last time you remember, Hoppity Hooper met those two rascals, Professor Waldo Wigglesworth and Fillmore the Bear. They were roving retailers of a remedy called Indian Guide Elixir, good for man or beast. But when the bear filled the elixir bottles with water, Hoppity was horrified. But that's water from ring a -ding Spring! Well, a euphonious name, that. It sounds phony to me, too. But nobody can drink that water. And pray tell, why not? Well, look what happens when I pour some over this rock. It gets wet. No, no, watch. 
Sure enough, as they watched, the rock underwent a curious transformation. The... Whoa, Waldo, it's growing hair. Hair. Yes, hair. For in a few seconds, the rocket sprouted a cookie duster mustache and a small Van Dyke. Then they grew into a huge handlebar mustache and a full set of sideburns. Uh, Dad Bradley, it's fantastic. Now can you see what would happen if you drank it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a fur-lined stomach. Hey, what's the matter with your grand? Sure enough, something strange was happening to Waldo. Is he sick? No, no, that just means you're getting an idea. Dad, uh, what is it, Waldo? I can see it now! A vision of loveliness. What is it? What is it? It's a bottle. Uh, what's in the bottle? Water from Ring-a-Ding Spring. And on the label it says... Yes, yes. Cue ball, the miracle hair restorer. Hoppity, my lad, your fortune is made. It is. This is the greatest boon to mankind since the split week. Yeah? A little fanfare, Beauregard. <laughs> Enough. We're off to Spain, Bound and Fortune. And sure enough, in the next few days, the country was bombarded with news about Hoppity's discovery. Frog's discovery astounds medical world. Cue ball hailed as scalp saver. Your printer picked its cue ball factory. And the whole world immediately took cue ball to its heart. Or rather, to its head. Now you can be taller than she is. Hey, kids, would you like to own a genuine midget sheepdog like this? It's easy. Just take one Mexican hairless man to cue ball. I was a 97-pound weakling. Then I used cue balls. Now I'm a 100-pound weakling. I got a three-pound mustache. Ladies, here's a new glamour tip. Just sprinkle a little cue ball on your ordinary cloth coat. Voila! Instant mink. Cue bald was a boon for subway scribblers, too. For no longer did they have to draw mustaches on pretty girls. Just a dab of cue ball did the trick. In 3D, too. Of course, there was some resentment when a case of cue ball fell off the truck and spilled all over a city street. But the quick-witted Waldo was equal to the occasion. Good people, we will simply change the name of this street from Baldwin Boulevard to Long Hair Lane. Yay! Us. No, Hoppity, not everyone. For here in his palatial home sits Cyrus Flugelhorn, the famous millionaire miser. Look at that chart. It's awful. Universal to pay down, federal wig down, United Scalp Wipes down. What happened, Mr. Flugelhorn? Cue ball, that's what happened. You want I should get rid of them cue ball guys, Mr. Flugelhorn? Yes, Swindrip, and get rid of them permanently. Right, boss. And, uh, Swindrip. Yeah, boss. Cheaply, too. Right, boss. And the sinister Windrip slithered out into the night. Well, it looks as if our three friends have picked up an enemy, and a powerful one at that. Don't miss next time. Hoppity Hooper starring in Dress to Kill. Our threes are shroud. Well, Hoppity Hooper's life hasn't been the same since Professor Waldo invented Cubald, the miracle hair restorer. Give me a bottle. Here, I'll take one. Uh, give me four of them. I want the large economy size. Look at that crowd of suckers. Uh, customers, Osgood, this stuff is selling like hotcakes. Yeah, well, sure. Whoever hated growing hair with hotcakes? Little wonder Cubald was so successful, for it actually did everything it was supposed to do. It not only grew hair on heads, but everywhere else. People used Cubald to repair shag rugs. They used it to turn T-shirts into Angora sweaters. One famous movie star even poured gallons of it on the ground in front of her home. Yes. Now I've got the only blonde lawn in Beverly Hills. Uh, what is your gardener? Think of that. Oh, what gardener? I use a hairdresser. Tell me, Miss Lavoom, do you want your lawn parted on the side or with bangs? Uh, hey, Waldo, that's the last of this batch. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. That's all for today. Oh, that's so bad. We 
better get back to ring it in spring and fill up some more bottles, Uncle Waldo. No, Hoppity. First, let me wallow about at all this scratch. Scratch? Moolah, my boy, get us happy cabbage. Uh, he means money, Hoppity. Oh, well, I'm glad you're so happy, Uncle Waldo. Well, there's only one little drawback, really. What's that? We made it honestly. Well, what's wrong with that? It's a new experience for me. Uh, when you've been a snake oil peddler, making an honest dollar seems like cheating. Little did our friends know that they had made a bitter enemy. Cyrus Flugelhorn, the notorious millionaire miser, whose investments in wigs, toupees, and scalp wax were now practically worthless. You're my broker, Crudley. Watch the outlook. Mr. Flugelhorn, if it's hair today, you're gone tomorrow. Drat and double drat. Lucky for me, I sent Windrip to pay those upstarts a little visit. But it's not one way, Windrip. Why, he's a thug, mean, depraved. It works cheap, too. He'll pulverize those idiots. But a man in your position can't do a thing like that. I know. That's why I sent Windrip. And at that very moment, the sinister Windrip was lurking outside Professor Waldo's caravan. Knocking over these three patches ought to be a lead pipe cinch. And I got just a lead pipe to do it. Skulking to the door of the trailer, Windrip prepared to do his dastardly deed. Somebody's at the door, Uncle Waldo. 83, 84. See who it is, Beauregard. Yeah, my name is Fillmore. Uh, well, both of you go, huh? 89, 90. Unfortunately for Windrip, he hadn't figured on the hardness of Fillmore's head. Uh, nope, nobody there, Waldo. But I'm sure I heard a knock. There it is again. All right, I'll see who it is. Who is it? He's right, Hoppity. There's nobody there. Yeah, and what's more, he left his hat. Let me see that, huh? Ah, it's according to the way I figure it, the man who owns this hat is six feet tall with a broken nose and a mean disposition. You found that all up from his hat? No, as a matter of fact, he's standing right behind you. Yikes! All right, you guys, line up against a trailer. He can't get us all. Let's make a run for it. On the other hand, I'm bound to get one of you. Uh, don't run, fellas. No, let's hop instead. What? Hop like this. What the? Stand still, you little creep. Well, obviously, Windrip hadn't figured on our hero's agility. In a few seconds, his gun was empty and Hoppity was unscathed. I had a line to say here, but it was censored. Hey, gee, that was keen. They don't call me Hoppity for nothing, you know. You mean you charge for it? Well, it would seem that our troubles are over, Jasper. Hey, you said it, Waldo. Nothing to worry. Bunch on, you forgot to set the brake, you addle peg, you numbskull. Hey, you drove it, Les. <laughs> well, accidents will happen. Yes, and it looks as if one's about to happen to Hoppity, for he's trapped in the back of a driverless truck, careening downhill to Hairpin Corner. <laughs> Makes you feel warm all over, doesn't it? Don't fail to see our next episode, How to Straighten a Hairpin. When last we saw Hoppity, he was in a bit of a decline and going downhill fast. You said it! Trapped in the back of Waldo Wigglesworth's snake oil van, he was approaching Hairpin Corner at tremendous speed. That's right. It looks as if Hoppity is doomed. Can't you say anything pleasant? Uh, well, it's a nice day for it. Thanks. Then suddenly the truck came up behind another car on the road ahead. A car driven by none other than one-way Windrip, the meanie who had started the whole thing. On seeing the truck approach, Windrip swore a mighty oath. Oh, fudge. Too late. <coughs> the next thing Windrip knew, he was a reluctant truck driver. Quickly, he applied the brakes. The truck slid sideways to the very edge of the cliff and stopped just in time. Boy, that was close, mister, and... It's you! You bet it's me, Lippy, and we got a little unfinished business to attend to. And Windrip started out of the cab to attack our hero. Unfortunately, he forgot how close he was to the edge. <coughs> but now I remember. My boy, you're safe! Yeah, but I wonder why that fellow was out to get us. Uh, probably after our money, Hoppity. But that's wrong, isn't it? Hoppity, my boy, as you grow older, you will learn that as soon as you have any money at all, somebody's always going to try to take it away from you. And you know what we call that? Stealing. No, income tax. 
Well, next morning, a dispirited Windrip was being dressed down by that mean miser, Cyrus Flugelhorn. And you call yourself a thug, letting yourself be outwitted by a frog. He got the jump on me. Confound it, Windrip. I want to see results. Such as? Three heads on a platter might be nice. Now get going. And again, Windrip slithered off. This time to intercept our friends at the source of Cubald Hair Restorer, Ring-a-Ding Spring. Easy, Ulrich. You don't have to fill the bottle so full. Skimp a little. Gee, Uncle Waldo, it's just water and there's plenty of it. But hoppity, that'd mean giving the suckers an even break. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing, I suppose, but it just goes against the grain somehow. But just then, Windrip rolled a strange-looking object into Fillmore's view. Uh, hey, Waldo, I found a pineapple. Is it right? I think so. It's ticking. Ticking? Pembroke, that's a live grenade! You got him, everybody! Hoppity's quick action saved his friends, but ruined the spring, for all the water was blown straight up into the air. Hoppity, there's a fortune up there! We've got to catch it! But Waldo was too late, and the miraculous hair-growing water fell untouched to the ground. Oh, I wouldn't say that. So a short time later in the Flugelhorn Mansion, uh, Mr. Flugelhorn. Is that you, Windrip? Good heavens, Windrip, what happened to you? I got the large economy-sized treatment with cue ball. You must have used up all the cue balled in the world. All except this bottle, Mr. Flugelhorn. Ow! Oh, Windrip, you'll pay for that. And the irascible Flugelhorn began to chase his hairy partner in crime down the street. Suddenly... Watch where you're going, young fella. What did you say? That blamed kid's got no respect for your elders. Kids? And Cyrus Flugelhorn looked at his reflection in a nearby store window. By Gadfrey, I do look like a young sprout. <whistles> Does your mother know you're out, kiddo? Well, that was the beginning of a new life for Cyrus Flugelhorn. He became a bon vivant, a big spender, a sparkling wit. <laughs> Twenty-three skidoo. Chicken Inspector! Oh, Si, you're a cud. Well, all is well and ends well, Uncle Waldo. Hey, uh, don't you have one too many wells in there? What next? Well, I thought we might go into business in a small way, with just a pea and three walnut shells. Now, you just keep your eye on the little pea, young man. Well, our friends are off on a brand new story. Be sure you see the beginning of it next time in the adventures of Hoppity Hooper. <laughs> It's... Hoppity, haven't you forgotten something? Oh, oh yeah, wait a minute. Uh... And now, here are some scenes from our next show. Uh, it's got kind of a beat to it, though, Waldo. Listen. <laughs> Hoppity, that's it! It's a new sound! Here, put on that wig! You are now my singing sensation, Baby Hooper!